All right, everyone, what is going on? Brian back here with another video. Uh, this is going to be my Monday Night Raw recap, uh, real fast re recap of this week's episode of Raw. Um, of course, uh, hopefully everyone had a very Merry Christmas. Um, and um, I know mine was, was really good. And then this weekend was really emotional, was really a sad weekend um, with the passing of two uh, professional wrestlers, both from very different uh, generations. Uh, number one was Danny Hodge, and the second one was the, the unexpected passing of John Hubber, uh, um, better known as Luke Harper in the WWE and Mr. Brody Lee in AEW, um, who passed away on Saturday at the age of 41. Uh, so my condolences go out to both of their respective families. Um, so a really emotional weekend, to say the very least. Um, a lot of tributes coming out up, uh, for um, Brody, um, and it, it was very unexpected. Um, apparently, he had been dealing with some lung issues, and um, and it, it, it is it was a very emotional weekend uh, for anyone that knew Brody in the wrestling uh, community, in the wrestling world. Um, so my condolences go out to his family and friends, as well as the family and friends of Danny Hodge. Um, both will be surely will be surely missed. Um, so getting into tonight's Raw, I'm just going to run through everything that went down. Um, basically, we started off with a promo from the WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre, um, talking about 2020 and the year that he has had. Uh, he also brought up about the upcoming, sorry guys, um, about the upcoming match between Keith Lee and Sheamus, where the winner will go on to next week's Raw Legends Night to challenge McIntyre for the championship. Um, Sheamus and Keith Lee both came out. They cut promos talking about the upcoming match, plus what, what happened last week where Sheamus hit a bro kick on Keith Lee after they were victorious in a six-man tag against Miz Morrison and AJ Styles. Uh, so that was the opening match of tonight's show. Uh, Keith Lee defeated Sheamus, so he will now go on to next week to challenge Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Uh, also in action, Grand Metal Week defeated The Miz. Um, it was not a very, it was a, a bad night for The Miz because he lost to Grand Metal Week, but it was also a um, an awesome night for The Miz as he is once again back in possession of the Money in the Bank briefcase for any of those any any of you that watched TLC saw that the Money in the Bank hit, uh, Money in the Bank contract was cashed in. However, due to a technicality, Miz is once again in possession of the Money in the Bank contract because at TLC it was John Morrison who cashed in on behalf of the Miz. So Miz never really cashed in his Money in the Bank contract. And a little bit later on in the show, he would get the contract, uh, the briefcase back, and is now once again still uh, once again in possession of the Money in the Bank contract. So uh, that was it for that. Uh, we had a, a Elias and AJ Styles backstage uh, segment that would set up a match between the two of them a little bit later on in the show. Uh, we had Shayna Baszler. Uh, she defeated Dana Brooke in one-on-one -on -one competition. Uh, we had a weird segment where it was Alexa's playground with Alexa Bliss, uh, and her guest was going to be Randy Orton. However, Randy Orton had other plans as he would in, he would 
step inside the Firefly Funhouse and start destroying it until Alexa basically issued a challenge to him to meet her later on in the ring. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, we had AJ Styles defeating Elias. Uh, we had um, Ricochet losing to Mustafa Ali. And the weird part about it, uh, the weird part about this is why did they, why are they, why did they mention Mustafa Ali's name so weird? It was like, uh, it was like they called him um, uh, Mustafa Ali. It's Mustafa Ali. Please, guy, please, folks, in, in, you ring announcers and stuff, get it right, please. It's Mustafa Ali. Not must 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 uh um whatever it was Mustafa Ali. It's not that. It's Mustafa Ali. I just found that to be weird. I don't know why they brought why they mentioned it like that. Maybe that's how you're supposed to that's how they want it pronounced. I don't know, but when he was when he wrestled before, he was known as Mustafa Ali, not Mustafa Ali. Um, so basically we had, uh, Charlotte Flair, or we also saw Charlotte Flair defeated Nia Jax via disqualification when Shayna Baszler got involved. Of course, Charlotte Flair made her return at TLC, teaming up with Asuka to defeat Nia and Shayna to win the Women's Tag Team Championships. Uh, they made their first title defense this past Friday on SmackDown in a victorious fashion over in a triple threat elimination tag team match against Bailey and Carmella and Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Uh, Nia and Shayna uh, both announced that they were gonna, are going to be participants in the Women's Royal Rumble coming up on January 31st. Um, we also saw an eight-man tag that saw the Hurt Business defeating the New Day and the Hardy Bros, uh, Matt Riddle and Jeff Hardy. Uh, so that was a, a big victory for the Hurt Business in eight-man tag team action. Um, I mentioned earlier that The Miz got uh, the Money in the Bank uh, contract back. Um, that happened in the segment after that eight-man tag. And then in the final segment that basically closed off Raw, um, Alexa Bliss came to the ring. She called out, um, she, Randy Orton would then come, come out to the ring as well. Uh, she would basically say, tell Randy Orton that this isn't about the Fiend. This is about her. She would then go out outside of the ring, grab a, uh, a, a gift that was wrapped up. She would open up the box. It would be a can of gasoline and matches. She would then proceed to pour some of the gasoline in the ring and like a straight line towards Randy Orton. However, and then she would then pour make, uh, make a circle around where she was standing and then dumped the rest of the gasoline on, on herself and told Randy Orton, do what you did to the fiend to me. And basically, Randy was like, okay, you you want me to do it, but I you know I want it I want to I want to do it, but I'm trying to process everything that's going on, and basically Raw went off the air with the lights out, and Randy lighting the match, um, and looking at the match as it was lit, and then the lights went then the screen went to black, and that was pretty much it for Raw. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if they're going to show it. Uh, of course, back at TLC, Randy Orton, after he defeated The Fiend in the Firefly Inferno match, set The Fiend on fire. And obviously, Alexa wanted wanted Randy to do the same to her. So, uh, and that was pretty much it for Monday Night Raw. Kind of the way, kind of back to the way it used to be. Kind of the kind of back to the way it's it's been um 
not an okay episode. I mean, there was a couple of moments like uh, where they paid tribute to um, um, Brody Lee. Uh, Xavier Woods hit a uh, discus clothesline, kind of like how Brody would do uh, did in the, when he was in WWE as Luke Harper. Um, I think McIntyre. I think if I remember correctly, McIntyre did something, said something, um, or um, made reference to to Brody. So um, so yeah, uh, not a not a good episode of Raw. I mean, I know that they're trying to be more edgier now because they don't want to you you know they don't want to keep having bad ratings, but you know, come on. Um, you know, now I I think they'll probably get a a ratings boost next week because next week it's Legends Night. It also has the WWE title match between Keith Lee challenging Drew McIntyre. So they'll probably get a good rating for that. But um all in all, I didn't really care for this week's episode of Raw. So with that being said, if you guys watched tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. Um, this has been my recap of tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.